Hey Budget Gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as I show you how to sow the seeds of a trailing lobelia plant. So let's go. There are a couple of different types of lobelia out there. There's the perennial variety as well as the annual variety. The perennial is, there are a couple of different kinds. There's the great blue lobelia, which I have in my yard. It's really pretty. It blooms in the late summer. And then there's also another perennial variety. That's the cardinal flower, which is a type of lobelia. And actually I'm winter sowing those in my milk jugs. I'm hoping that I get some free plants this year. But the seeds that we're going to sow today are an annual type of lobelia. They're definitely an annual here where I live in zone 5B. The trailing lobelia is beautiful. It comes in a lot of different colors. You often find it in different shades of blue, purple, and even white. Last year, I had a lot of success growing lobelia from seed. And I grew it from seed that I collected myself and then seed that I had also bought. And I used it all around my yard. I used it out in the landscape in a few different flower beds. I also used it in a number of my pots. It's a great filler as well as a thriller in any container or pot. What I like about it is that it doesn't get very tall. It gets to be about six to eight inches in height. So it's a nice compact type of flower that you would find towards the front of a flower bed. Trailing lobelia thrives in full sun, especially here where I live in the Northeast. We have warm summers, but we don't have terribly hot summers. However, down in the South and other areas where your summers are very hot, you might want to give your trailing lobelia some afternoon shade just so that it can survive the heat. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this plant is not heat tolerant. It does great in the spring, but in the heat of the summer, it might die off a little bit, but it'll revive back as the temperatures cool off in the late summer into the fall months. What I really like about this plant is that it's deer resistant. And here where I live, there are a lot of woods around my house. We do have deer. The deer do not bother this plant, which is a nice treat. What I also like about Lobelia is that it attracts the bees, it attracts hummingbirds, it even attracts the butterflies. Something that I've had a lot of luck with and I recommend that you do is cutting back your Lobelia, as harsh as it may seem, one if not two times during the growing season. I typically like to cut it back during the midsummer and then again in the late summer. It just helps promote a bushier plant and it just makes for more flowers and your plant will be happier in the end. Now you wanna plant your Lobelia seeds about eight to 12 weeks before your last frost. And my last frost date based on my zip code is May 15th. So if you count backwards, today is February 29th. I still have plenty of time. It's a perfect time for me to be sowing these seeds. It's always good to read the back of your seed packet for any seed that you're sowing just to see what that seed requires. And in my case, with the seeds that I have here, I collected all of these seeds, which means there are no instructions on these seed packets. And if that happens for you, it's okay. We have the internet at our fingertips. You can always find information out there. Whenever I do my research though, I always like to go to a number of different websites. I specifically like to go to more reputable companies that are out there that are selling seeds, but do, do your research and check a number of different sites just to get some good information on what you're looking for. And based on my research, and from what I remember in previous years, with Lobelia, they need light to germinate, which means you're just barely gonna be pressing the seeds into the surface of your seed starting mix or your potting mix. You can cover it with vermiculite after you sow the seeds, just to help retain the moisture, and it gives it enough light to come through but I've never put vermiculite on the top of any of the flats when I'm starting seeds and my seeds have germinated just fine, but that is another option that you can do. Lobelia usually takes about two weeks to germinate after you plant the seeds. So you wanna give them plenty of time to germinate. And for a soil temperature, they prefer about 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And I will be placing the trays that have these seeds sown in them on a heat mat. The heat mat is on 24 hours a day, and as soon as I see a fair amount of germination happening, I will remove the tray off of the heat mat. And at that time, I will also remove the humidity dome. It's very important when you're sowing any seeds to make sure that you have a good light source right above those seeds, because as soon as the seeds germinate and the plant starts sprouting, they need that direct 
light, intense light on top of them. You don't want leggy plants. And that's one of the many reasons why you might have leggy plants is if you don't have a light source directly above your seedlings. Now behind me, you can see I do have some grow lights. They're turned off because they're too bright when I am making videos. The grow lights are on a timer. They come on at 5 a.m. and they turn off at 9 p.m. And I have a video that I made that shows you how I set up these grow lights. I'll be sure to put a link to that video in the description below. I also have a video that shows when I collected the seeds off of the Lobelia plant. I'll also put the link to that video down below. It's my goal when I'm making these videos to give you as much information as possible, just so that you're successful with your journey when it comes to seed starting. So whenever you're looking at any of my videos, be sure to look down in the description. I'll always try to link videos that might be helpful to you when it comes to starting seeds. Now I'm going to take you in for a closer look and we're going to go ahead and we're going to sow some of these seeds together. When it comes to a seed starting mix, I like to make my own seed starting mix. It's two parts of peat moss to one part of vermiculite. However, you can use two parts of cocoa core to one part of vermiculite, or you can just buy your own seed starting mix. You can also use potting mix, whatever you feel comfortable with. However, I would recommend when it comes to sowing these particular seeds, since the seeds are very small, it's my preference and I would recommend that you use something that's very fluffy, very lightweight. And I feel that a seed starting mix is fluffier and easier for the seeds to germinate in, the smaller the seeds are. When you're sowing bigger seeds, then I would recommend a potting mix would be fine as well. And by the way, when I'm talking about parts, it's basically the container I used for scooping. In my case, it's a small bowl. So each bowl is one part. So just keep that in mind whenever I'm referring to parts. And also, this seed starting mix has been pre-moistened. I boiled some hot water with my tea kettle, and I poured it in here. I mixed this up, and then I covered this with a plate. And the reason that I did that was because I'm trying to kill off any possible fungus gnat eggs. Fingers crossed, it's the end of February, and I still don't see any fungus gnats. You can definitely skip that step if you want, but I like to always share that. Even if you don't boil the water, you still want to add water in here and make sure you're working with a pre-moistened potting mix or seed starting mix. It's cooled down now, so it's safe for me to touch. And you can see that when I squeeze this, there is no water dripping out of here. However, when I let go, the seed starting mix holds its form. And that's the consistency that you're looking for when you're working with a seed starting mix or a potting mix. This container has already been used this season. I had sterilized it early in the season, but for right now, I don't need to sterilize it because I don't have any disease issues. But if you were using a container that you got from somewhere else uh, and you're not sure if it has any issues, you always want to sterilize your containers. This is a restaurant to go container. You can see it's not very deep. It's quite shallow. I like to multi-sow or heavily sow seeds in containers like this but you don't have to do that. If you want to plant your seeds in something like a six cell pack, you can do that. I enjoy doing it this way because oftentimes some seeds are going to germinate, some are not. A lot of seeds that I start are either old or they're seeds that I collected. Plus it's a process that I enjoy, but it is a time consuming process. So just keep that in mind. And no matter what you use for your container, you want to make sure that there are holes in the bottom of it. And you can see that I did poke holes in the bottom here. You can poke the holes with whatever tool you have. When it comes to how much seed starting mixture I'm going to put in here, I'm not going to fill it to the top. I'll probably fill it halfway. And now I just want to make sure that the seed starting mix has been spread around the whole container. And the key with when you're adding potting mix or seed starting mix to any container is you want to make sure you're pushing down enough so that you're eliminating any of the air pockets in there. You also don't want to press down too hard because you need the roots that are going to be forming to grow in this medium. So you can see here, this is just a small packet of seeds that I collected last year. The Lobelia, it's a blue color. It's an annual and the date that I collected the seeds. And if you look very carefully, the seeds are a light brown color. So you do see some chaff in there and the chaff is just the material from the seed pod but the seeds are definitely mixed in there with the chaff. And we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna sow everything here. And these seeds are just gonna be scattered all over the top here. 
They're not old at all. I just collected them in the fall time. Oftentimes when you buy seeds, especially when they're this small, they may be pelleted. And it does make that easier when it comes to sowing the seeds, but this has never been a problem for me because these seedlings are only gonna be in here for a short period of time. And as soon as they get larger, what I do is I prick them out and I put them into their own six cell packs. I realize that you cannot see the seeds and just trust me when I say that they are on there. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press down. We wanna make sure that those little teeny tiny seeds have good contact with the seed starting mix. The next thing I like to do, even though the seed starting mix has been pre-moistened, I'm gonna add the smallest amount of water. Now I wanna cover this with some sort of a humidity dome. You can use some clear plastic humidity dome and also you can use clear plastic wrap. I'm gonna reuse clear plastic wrap that I've already used before when I sowed some other seeds. And I just wanna make sure that it has a nice tight seal around this container. I'm just crossing out whatever seeds I had started previously with this wrap. And I'm gonna label on here Lobelia, Blue, and today's date. And again, I will remove this clear plastic wrap and also this tray here off of the heat mat and this will get put under my led grow lights when it comes to bottom watering a tray like this what i like to do is i just have a cookie sheet that came with my toaster oven and i like to add water to the base of the cookie sheet and what will happen is this tray will soak up the water from below because there are drainage holes so we're gonna go ahead and place this tray on the heat mat. And I do have LED lights here as well that will get pulled down and just be right above this tray. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, impatient seedlings are here. I also have some alyssum in here. I have snapdragons. I even have some vinca. Lots of plants growing and need to be pricked out and moved into six cell packs. I made a video recently showing you my process for potting up seedlings that were multi-sown or heavily sown in a tray like the tray that we sowed today. And I'll put a link to that video down in the description below. I'll basically be following the same process when it comes to pricking out seedlings once these lobelia plants germinate. And before I end this video, I just wanted to share a couple of things that have been on my mind. I know that it can be overwhelming between, you know, what kind of seed starting mix or potting mix to use what kind of grow lights to use, when to start your plants, issues you're running into when your seedlings emerge and then maybe all of a sudden they're dying off because of damping off. I just want to say, you know, gardening should be fun and it's a learning process for all of us, for anyone that's just starting to garden or someone that's been gardening for years. We're always learning. And that's what I want you to take away from this video is to give it a try if you've never tried it before. And if you have been growing plants from seed, to experiment, to try different things. And also, I think it's a good idea to make notes along the way. If it's in a journal or, you know, for in my case, I like to keep a spreadsheet where I'm just, all I'm putting down is when I started my plants. And that way I know next year if I need to start them earlier or later. And then there are a lot of just great resources out there. You can always ask me questions. There are a lot of other people that are making videos or that have Instagram. Feel free to reach out and ask questions because knowledge is after all power. I hope you're able to get your hands dirty, be it inside or outside. And until the next video, make it a great day with gardening.